Can we explain excavation design in under 5 minutes? Let's find out. Excavations and retaining walls are used to support earth and create a cavity below the natural ground level. Coming in a wide range of shapes, sizes and materials. Retaining walls can include three components. Stem, toe slab and hill slab. Some walls may also include a shear key, to resist sliding. Stems can include drainage holes, these reduce the water pressure acting directly on the wall. A drain pipe can also be provided along the back of the wall, for a similar effect. Coarse aggregate can be added along the back of the wall, this allows water to flow down to the drain pipe. The wall surface in contact with the soil is typically treated with some form of waterproofing. Let's consider two of the most common types of retaining wall. Gravity walls resist earth pressure via the self-weight of the wall alone. Typically these walls are constructed from stone masonry. The second type of wall is the cantilever wall. This is the most common type of retaining wall. These walls are typically used up to a depth of 8 meters below ground level. For this wall type, the stem, toe and heel act as one-way cantilever slabs. The stem acts as a vertical cantilever under the lateral earth pressure. The heel acts as a horizontal cantilever under the action of net weight of retained earth. The toe acts as a horizontal cantilever under the action of net soil pressure. Here you can see the deformed shape of the wall, under these combined forces. Let's now look at the failure modes of retaining walls. The first failure mode is failure by overturning. In this failure mode the toe will act as the center of rotation and the entire wall will rotate about this point. In the absence of the toe slab, the base directly below the wall stem will act as the center of rotation. The active earth pressure acts as a destabilizing moment on the wall and the passive earth pressure will act as a stabilizing moment. The weight of the soil on the heel slab will act as a stabilizing moment. The second type of failure is by sliding. The active earth pressure applied to the wall acts as a destabilizing force sliding the wall forwards. The stabilizing force is provided by the friction between the base slab and the soil below. The frictional force is given by mu times r. Where mu is the friction coefficient between soil and concrete and r is the resultant soil pressure. If the active earth pressure is high and the wall is failing and sliding, then a shear key can be introduced to provide additional sliding resistance. The final type of failure considered is bearing failure. This bearing capacity is determined using the Terzaghi approach and more can be learnt in our video on bearing capacity. The length L is used to distribute the vertical reaction. Now we will look at how the forces are calculated which act on a cantilever retaining wall. First we assume ground level is flat and constant. The earth pressure will increase linearly with depth. This means that at the top of the wall, zero earth pressure is applied and at the bottom of the wall the maximum earth pressure is applied. This earth pressure is known as active earth pressure or PA. The maximum active earth pressure at the bottom of the wall will be Ka, times gamma S, times H. In this expression, H is the total depth of the excavation, gamma is the unit weight of the soil. Here Ka is the active earth pressure coefficient, based on the Rankine theory and calculated by this expression. Here the angle phi is the angle of friction or angle of repose for the soil. When the backfill is sloping, the expression changes to this new equation, where the additional angle theta, is the angle of inclination of the backfill. The pressure Pa acts at the centroid of the active earth pressure. This centroid is at a distance of h over 3, from the base of the retaining wall. The magnitude of this force will be the area of the triangle. The area of the active earth pressure triangle is half, times base, times height. The passive pressure active on the toe side of the retaining wall and acts to stabilize the wall. The coefficient of passive pressure Kp is calculated by this expression. This pressure is can be excluded from design calculations, if so desired, to make the calculation more conservative. The final consideration is any additional surcharge. This surcharge contributes to active earth pressure. The nature of the surcharge can, for example, result from vehicles or construction operations. Let's say the surcharge has an intensity of W kN per meter squared and is uniformly distributed. This pressure will act laterally on the wall, with an intensity of Ka times W. The force due to this surcharge is the area of the rectangle which is Ka, times W, times height. 
Let's look at how Sibbles.ai can be used to analyze an excavation. First, we can edit the soil profile and the drained properties of the soil. Layers of soil can be added or removed with these buttons. Next, we can modify the profile of the excavation itself. We can change the depth of the excavation, the depth of the toe of the wall and the strut position. We can add or remove struts using these buttons. Advanced settings can also be used to further modify properties of the excavation. After running the analysis, the loads applied to the strut and base slab are calculated. Results for the wall itself are also generated, with estimates for the bending moment, shear force and deflection. Estimated passive soil reaction required is also given, along with an estimate of whether a base slab is required to restrain the force acting on the toe of the wall. Diagrams are generated for the applied loads, bending moment, shear force and deflection. Discover more at www.civils.ai.